and welcome to This Day Devo. Pastor Guy here for the third and final day of First Thessalonians. We read chapter 5, verses uh, 12 through 28, which is Paul's final advice where he kind of goes through some he's it's almost like he's like okay that's probably enough let's let's jot down some more quick advice let's wrap this all up with some boom 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 i'm gonna just here's some things you need to know i gotta go right and (laughs) he does just that for us and specifically uh in the context of this he's saying Honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work because they work hard among you Give them and give you spiritual guidance. So give them respect and wholehearted love for their work and live peacefully together. Okay, um, here's why I read that. Uh, he says about the importance of respecting leaders and their role of, uh, of um, spiritual guidance. Now, after he says that, he goes through some hard things. And some good encouragements. But he starts with, hey, here's some respect. So so here's the reason I say that. Um, I, I, as a pastor, there are uh, some hard conversations that you have to have. Like it just sort of comes with the territory. Uh, it's not not always, be- you know, butterflies and sunshine. Uh, pastor Craig Grishel from Life Church, I once heard him say that my job as a pastor is to comfort the inflicted and inflict the comforted. Comfort the inflicted and inflict the comforted. I, I like that, um, and, and, it, and it really does fit in a lot of ways. I, 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 I One time, I, I uh, just a couple years ago, I I, uh, I don't know how to say this. I this guy had a guy uh, call the church um, who said he told me, I didn't know this guy, he told me he was a Christian, and he needed some help with uh, diapers and wipes and a little bit of food, stuff like that for his family. And and I said, okay, I'll help you. And I, I did. I did. I went and I, I took, I, I, I went and I got some diapers and wipes and some food and took took up to his place and I helped him. And he was a very nice, very friendly Christian man. But, you know, not a, not a member of our church. And and it was great. Um, I think it was two years later. Um, hadn't heard from the guy, hadn't seen the guy. Uh, had expressed interest in coming to church, singing on the worship team, things like that. He's like, "Oh, I want to do this," but he never he never came to church. And then all of a sudden, I get a phone call from him on, uh, on and really, to be honest, I wasn't having a great day. I wasn't really at the top of my game, you know, uh, emotionally or spiritually. And he and I found out this was the same guy asking for some of the same things, and I decided that since he. Uh, since he wasn't, since he was a Christian, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it. And and mind you, I was probably not tactful, and it wasn't my best moment. And I just like, I was like, look, like, it's two years later. What are you doing to improve your situation? Have you been looking for work? Have you, you know, is this is this an actual is is this an actual problem or is this laziness? And I will tell you what, I got, I got my head bit off in more ways than one. How dare I? I'm just in a hurt situation and I need a leg up and you're supposed to be a friendly pastor. Listen, on that day, I probably said some things to him that I shouldn't have. And I did apologize to him and, and ask for some forgiveness. Um, but I also stand by the things that I said because as a pastor, he was calling me for some help. Uh, physical things and I was like I could be like yeah I'm gonna be like Peter and be like I give you Jesus but I don't have food but I got Jesus <laughs> and I was like I, I tried to give him spiritual guidance and he did not receive it well from me maybe I wasn't the right person to give him that guidance but in the in the moment it just seemed like what needed to be done and the reason I say that is because sometimes hard talk happens sometimes we have to do that um and sometimes we have, and, that, and sometimes that's what we see Paul doing, where it's, it's look, the, the best thing I need is to be roughed up a little bit. The best thing I need is to be put in my place and reminded of the promise that I made to God to live the way he called me to live in my pursuit of living to please him in my holiness. And so I think in that pursuit of right, like in comfort the inflicted, inflict the comforted, 
for the purpose of making us all better. And I will say, if we, if we do the rest of this passage, always be joyful, never, ever, ever stop praying, always be thankful in all circumstances, do not stifle the Holy Spirit. When we do all of these things and we stay away from every kind of evil, all these other things are just going to happen, right? And then whenever the pastor or the spiritual mentor in your life says, hey, listen, I'm not being mean. I'm not being judgmental. I'm not trying to like put you down. I just want you to, I just want you to see this. Like, did you not make a promise to the God who gave his life for you to live in such a way and live in such a manner that declares the glory of God? Did you not make this promise? Because if you did, um, I see something in your life that I, I really think you should submit to prayer and repent of. And then we'll receive it well. And so when our spirits are clean and pure with God, we can receive it well. And it's not, it's like discipline. We don't like it when it happens. But at the end, we look back and we say, you know what? I needed that. And I'm really glad that that person, that mentor, that pastor didn't mince words. They told me like it was because I wasn't living to please the Lord. And I want to. I want to. So God bless you. I love you. Um, and uh, have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow in Second Thessalonians for just one day. Every word see ya. Bye. Sent down from heaven as the power of Christ.